Hey everyone, I am so excited for you to be entering into week two of Hero Worship, a 12-week journey to become more like Jesus. And uh, I really toyed with the idea of calling it a, a 12-week starter to becoming more like Jesus. Because the truth is, this isn't any in any way meant to be a comprehensive um, experience on becoming like Jesus in every way. We're going to spend our whole lives learning more and more what it is to be informed by what we see in His life, by His goodness, by His grace, by His wisdom, by His compassion, and most of all, by His love. He is our example, and He is our hero, and He is the one we're following, uh, whose footsteps we're following in, and who we want to become more and more like every day. And so that's the point of this whole journey. And you have just read the introductory chapter on hero worship and just kind of framing the whole experience for you, um, and ultimately understanding that at the end of the day, love is the context for everything good. Love is the ground, it's the fertile ground from which the fruit of the Spirit is going to grow in us. It is what Jesus exemplifies for us as He is the perfect embodiment of God who is love for us. So I hope you went to the end of the chapter and that you asked yourself some of those questions. Some of those uh, can be kind of intriguing to say, did you ever think of Jesus as being fully God? as the perfect embodiment of who God is and who He always was. As we explored in the chapter, there are uh, the beginning of different books in the New Testament. The writers go out of their way to establish that Jesus is God in the flesh. He is the perfect representation of who God is. He, in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The book of Colossians, the book of Hebrews, they go, they go straight at it, out of the gate, say this is who Jesus is. There's no question. There's no wiggle room. There's no, uh, he wasn't just a good teacher. He wasn't just a good guy. If someone says it's okay to worship him, then he actually it receives that worship from people. He's either a lord or liar or lunatic, right? The C.S. Lewis paradigm. You know, he's, he's either crazy and delusional to think he's worthy of worship. He's either lying to you and manipulating you and making himself out to be some sort of false teacher, some kind of guru, or he is indeed who he says he was. Either way, you have to make up your mind what you're going to do with Jesus. And who you believe him to be is the critical question. Do you believe him to be God in the flesh? Is he really the hero that we want to pursue and worship? And if you do believe that he died and rose again, well, it changes everything. You know, we don't have to worry too much about, you know, the six literal days of creation or Jonah and the whale or violence of the Old Testament or all of these other issues. Those, not that those are unimportant things, but until you decide precisely who Jesus is, what are you going to do with that? All that stuff doesn't matter. Because if you don't believe Jesus was raised in the Son of God and He's worthy of our worship, all those other questions are just a waste of time. And as Christ followers, we are resting on the foundation of the Son of God, right? And that, that um, He lived the life that He lived, was the example that He was for us as our hero. That He was crucified, He was betrayed, He was slandered. The worst possible thing happened to the best possible person. And then He showed us He was who He said it was by rising from the dead and putting everyone else to shame. He showed us that evil and slander and injustice don't have the last word. And that's why our hope as Christ followers rests in Him, not in what He said as much as what He did. He is our Savior. As you head into this next week here in Hero Worship, um, some of these chapter titles, it's going to sound kind of uh, maybe simplistic to you. I promise they are simple, but they are not simplistic. Jesus prayed. It was fundamental to his ministry. He modeled this for us in every conceivable scenario. And for those of you who've been Christ followers for a long time, you may look at some of these practices and they may look like uh, Christianity 101. You know, you're going, oh, of course Jesus prayed, of course Jesus knew Scripture, you know, of course Jesus observed the Sabbath, blah, 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 right? But the thing is, is most of us know far more than we are obedient to. Most of us have more head knowledge of what Scripture has to say about things, even what Jesus had to say about things, than we have actually incorporated into the fabric and the rhythm of our lives. And these truths, they are, they're simple truths, but they will grow with you for the rest of your life. Jesus prayed. 
And it behooves us to look to him and to see, well, what did it look like for the Savior to pray? What did it look like as he modeled it for his disciples? And how do we follow in his footsteps and emulate the greatness of our Savior, of our hero today, here and now? So you're going to read a chapter on day one, and then every other day you're going to have some simple little guided um, focus times, practice times for you to, to dig in and kind of discover exactly what does that look like for you. So you're going to have a scripture, you're going to have some focus questions, and you're going to have the opportunity to do some journaling and actually exercise the practice that we're talking about. Because once again, the point isn't for more information. The point is to take that information and put flesh on the bones of our, of our doctrines, of our theologies, because that's what Jesus did, right? He walked the walk, right? And he talked the talk. And that's our desire is to walk with that kind of integrity the way he did. So I just want to encourage you every day, apply yourself to this, dig in, enjoy it. And as we get further along, the practices will become a little bit more demanding of you. They might take a little bit more time. You still want to find that practice space that we talked about in the introductory chapter and find that sacred time, that sacred space, that sacred rhythm for you to meet with your Creator, to say, here I am. I want to be more like you. Change me from the inside out. God bless you as you continue on this journey, and I'll talk to you next week.